In this tutorial, we're going to talk about WebP, what it is, who created it, which browsers support it, how to create WebP images, and how to automate using WebP inside your WordPress site. And my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you like that kind of thing, make sure to click subscribe and ring the bell. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you enjoy this video, like it. We're getting started right now. WebP is one of the newest image formats. It was created by Google. What it essentially does is it combines the compression ability of JPEGs with the quality retention of PNGs and the transparency of PNGs. And so it allows you to make high quality, transparent or not transparent images that are very small. And WebP was created by Google. I think I mentioned that. This is the Google developers page right on the screen here that explains what WebP is, how it works, support, and all that kind of stuff. There's a link to it down below in the description if you want to check it out. The reason WebP hasn't taken the internet by storm is because it's not supported by all browsers, and browser support has been slow to come. If we check out caniuse.com for the WebP image format, we see this chart down here that shows current support. All the green boxes support WebP, the red ones don't. So the browsers that don't support it are IE, Safari, Safari iOS, Blackberry browser, IE Mobile, and the Kai OS browser. Now you might say those are pretty minor browsers, so why not just serve only WebP images on our site because it makes our site faster, makes your images load faster. You can do that, but then people who are using these browsers who visit your site are going to see a broken image. That's going to be bad for user experience. So what you want to do is make sure you have a fallback, which means if the WebP doesn't load, you can either load a PNG version or a JPEG or a GIF or something so it's not just a broken image. Now in WordPress, we can automate that. I'll get to that at the end of this video. If you have any questions while you're watching this video, please leave them in the comments down below and hopefully I can answer them for you or somebody else in the community can answer them for you. And on the topic of fallbacks, how do we create a fallback? If you're developing a website and you're able to edit the code, you can use this picture tag right here. This picture tag allows you to set various sources for images and the browser will check the first one and it'll decide can I load this or not? If it can, it does, and it ignores the rest. If it cannot load the first one, it then goes to the second one. Can I load this one? If it does, if, or if it is able to, then it loads that one, and so on. So the first source is always your WebP image. And there's a WebP image type here, and we can see the extension .webp. And if the browser can load that, it does. And if it's an IE browser or a Safari or Safari iOS or any one of those other ones that can't load it, it will see the PNG option because it supports PNGs, it will load the PNG option. And that's how we create a fallback in the code. And if you're using WordPress, you don't have to worry at all about this. I'm gonna show you how to use a free tool that will serve WebP images when possible and when not, and, and does it all for you automatically. If you wanna create a WebP image, you might be wondering how do you do that? There's a website called Squoosh, created by Google. All you have to do is drag and drop an image right in here, and you can adjust its settings and download the WebP format. So I have this image right here, the sunset. It's gonna upload that into here. Let's zoom out a bit. This is what it looks like. And we have before and after. On the left is a before, on the right is an after. On the right hand side, under compression, we're gonna choose WebP. It's just working, I'm gonna reload the image. And we can see right away at a quality of 75 and an effort of four, I'm not sure what effort means. I guess how hard the computer's working. If we scroll back and forth at this zoomed out distance, we can't see any difference in the quality, at least I can't. And the original image in the bottom left here shows 16.2 megabytes in size. The compressed image, the WebP format, 854 kilobytes. And there's no difference. But we're gonna zoom in. We're gonna zoom in on this tree right here because there is a slight difference. When we move this slider now, you'll see it gets a little bit blurry on the right hand side as we scrub this scrubber here. And that's the difference between WebP and the original. It's a little bit blurry. You can only really see it when you're really zoomed in. If you've done a lot of compression with JPEGs, you'll know that when you compress too much, you get little dots appearing where there shouldn't be. Those are called artifacts. You get pixelation, you get problems like that. With WebP, you don't really. If we lower the quality down to 15, let's see what that looks like. It's working. Our image size is now 267 kilobytes. And it's a little bit more blurry but still not bad because if we zoom out, you still can't see a difference. Or well, you can a little bit. If you're looking at this cloud right here, you can see a little bit more detail as I scrub over it. But for the most part, you can't really tell. 
As you're comparing the two, you can spot minor differences, but if you see the image on the right on a website, you think, wow, it's a great looking image. It's only 267 kilobytes compared to 16.2 megabytes. So that's a huge compression. And then if you like your compression or you like your WebP image, you can click on this download button and it downloads the WebP image to your hard drive. Then you can upload that into your media folder on your WordPress site. But I don't recommend you do it that way. I recommend that you go into your WordPress dashboard and you head over to plugins and then add new and you look up short pixel AI. And this is the one you want up here, short pixel adaptive images. It's currently installed, it's active on my site. And what it does is it automatically creates WebP versions of images. So if I were to add this image to a page, let's just go to pages, add new, and I'm just gonna put in here, make this WebP, lowercase I think. I'm just gonna add an image block, I'm gonna upload the image, let's drag and drop that into here, all 16 and something megabytes. I'm gonna publish this, I'll get into the settings for the Adaptive Images plugin in just a minute, but if we go and view this page, we should hopefully be loading a compressed version and hopefully WebP. Let's inspect this thing. And currently we are still loading the JPEG, but within a few minutes, this is gonna switch and this is gonna start loading the WebP version. And you also notice that the size is already adjusted. And what I mean by that is this image size here is what is it, 731 by 480 pixels, this size we see here. The original is much bigger. That's why it's 16.2 megabytes, because the original is huge. Adaptive images not only serves WebP or compresses into compressed PNG and JPEGs, depending on what settings you choose, but it also makes the image scale down to the exact size of area you need it, which is important. It's important to have the exact size of image because it makes your site load faster, and it gives you that green check mark on GT metrics and other speed testing tools where it says serve scaled images. So it does that for you automatically. So we're gonna wait a few minutes, keep refreshing this thing, and this should show up as a WebP. In fact, instead of waiting, let's just go into the settings. Let's go back into here, go to settings, and then short pixel AI. And here we have our settings. We can choose lossy, glossy, and lossless. You can make a few tests to help you decide which one. If you choose the one you want, it describes down here what it does. Lossy gives you the most compression. Glossy, a little bit less, lossless, almost no compression at all. This checkbox here is important for serving WebP because it says serve images in WebP from all browsers that support it. So this takes into account what we saw over on Can I Use. So if the plugin detects IE or an IE visitor, it will not serve WebP. It's gonna serve a different format. So it does that all automatically for you. You don't have to worry about it. And if you don't have a lazy load plugin on your site, you can check this box and that will lazy load the images. That means as a user scrolls down a post, the images will not load until they get down to that spot in the post. And that allows for better site speed because all the images on the site are loaded as needed instead of loaded at the very beginning. In the advanced tab, we have short pixel CDN which is a content delivery network. This is free to use with the ShortPixel AI. You can also use your own CDN if you have a different one. And the other settings we have here are very well explained. And if you want this tool for free, like I mentioned earlier, just head over to the link in the description down below. It'll take you to here. And this is the ShortPixel website. ShortPixel is a premium plugin, but that does have a free version. If you go to monthly plans, under free, you have this plus 50%. Normally, if you don't go through the link below, you're gonna get 100 image compressions a month. And if you go through the link below, you get an extra 50%. So you get 150. And if you decide to upgrade at some point, if you want to, you get extra 50% on every level using the link down below. Even the one-time plans, these are quite nice if you have a lot of images on your site. Here you can one-time 30,000 image compressions, or with our link with the plus 50, you get 45,000 images for just 20 bucks. So that's a pretty good deal if you have a lot of images on your site and the image compression is great. And these image compressions, they work for short pixel adaptive images and short pixel also has an image compression plugin. So these compressions work for either one that you use. You shouldn't use them both on the same website. And I have another video on this channel I've linked to down below in the description and in the card up above that shows you how to use the short pixel image compression plugin, which is different than adaptive images. So I encourage you to get a free account because I don't know how long it'll be free, but right now it is and you get 150 image compressions a month, which is enough for most websites. Now that's been a few minutes, let's head back to the website with our image here and see if it's now loading in WebP. 
just going to refresh. And then let's inspect here again. And now we see right here it's loading through the short pixel CDN and it's lossless and WebP right there. So it's converting our image to WebP and the original image is also in the URL, which is this JPEG link right here. But it's using WebP format now for this specific image and that's what we wanted. I'm using Google Chrome. Google Chrome supports WebP. The other browsers will see other versions, but I'm seeing the WebP version on Google Chrome. So that in a nutshell is WebP, what it is, who supports it, how to create it, and how to automate it inside your WordPress site using the Short Pixel Adaptive Images plugin. So that's how it works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And also leave a comment down below if you have any questions and like this video if you found it helpful. Next up is watching this video up here, which shows you the Short Pixel Image Compression plugin in action, or this video down here, which compares the compression quality of the Short Pixel plugin to a bunch of others that are popular in WordPress. And you'll see that Short Pixel ends up on top. It's a great plugin, so make sure you check it out. And until next time, my name is Bjorn Allpass from the WP Learning Lab. Keep crushing it, and we'll see you in the next video.